This is Shuri Castle in Okinawa, or what was left of Shuri Castle at the end of May 1945. It had been the target of naval bombardment and artillery attacks throughout the Okinawan campaign. It was a pile of ruins when finally occupied by American soldiers nearly two months after the initial invasion of Okinawa. The castle had been the command post of the 32nd Army, which consisted of 120,000 men charged with the defense of the island. It was the headquarters of General Ushijima, who had constructed deep underground bunkers and a network of tunnels beneath it. The ruins belie the original grandeur of the structure. The American advance across southern Okinawa had been long and tortured. In order to come to grips with Shuri Castle, many obstacles had to be overcome. They had names like Cactus Ridge, The Pinnacle, Hacksaw Ridge, Chocolate Drop Hill, Flat Top Hill, and Ashimi Ridge. Each and every one of them brutal battles were the best of the best of the young men of the generation fought and gave all they had. One of these young men was First Sergeant Carl Stanek, who, in his youth, had grown up on the streets of Brooklyn, New York, the child of Polish immigrants. He was the second youngest of seven brothers and one sister. He signed up with the Army the day after Pearl Harbor. He became part of the 77th Division and fought in every one of his engagements throughout the Pacific Theater Campaign. He fought at Guam, Leyte in the Philippines, Camaroreto, Ieshima, and Okinawa. He had distinguished himself in these campaigns by winning a Bronze Star at Leyte and a Silver Star at the Battle of Hacksaw Ridge. At Hacksaw Ridge, the divisional history records the following account. On May 5th, the bulk of the enemy strong points left on the south slope of the escarpment were cleaned out by the regiment. Company C lost its three remaining officers during the day in bitter close-in fighting that marked the destruction of these positions. First Sergeant Carl Stanek took over and braved heavy rifle fire to walk out on the open slope to direct the fire of three tanks on a very heavily defended position that was holding up the advance of the 3rd Battalion to the west. This action was instrumental in the reduction of the position which at the end of the day contained 350 dead Japanese. He suffered wounds to his arm and was hospitalized until May 16th. In his book, Operation Iceberg, Gerald Astor recounts First Sergeant Carl Stanek's return to his unit and his participation in the battle for Ashimi Ridge. C Company of the 77th Division's 307th Regiment now concentrated their attentions on Ashimi Ridge, an elevation that guarded access to Shuri. Carl Stanek, the company first sergeant and career soldier, had reported back for duty, his arm still bandaged from a wound. A few days earlier, 94 replacements boosted the unit strength up to 176. Many of these newcomers were fresh out of basic training and there was no time for the indoctrination and training policy. The 1st Platoon from Company C reinforced the 58 soldiers, including 30 riflemen replacements, still virgin to combat, joined E Company for a pre-dawn attack on Ashimi Ridge. Silently in single file, they climbed the rocky, battle-scarred ground. Bayonets were fixed, but rifles not loaded to prevent any accidental shot that might give them away. Several times they froze as flares lit up the scene. But at 4.45 a.m. May 17th, less than an hour after they jumped off, they occupied the site. 
the surprise strike using Japanese technique of nocturnal infiltration enabled the GIs to dig in on the narrow crest of the ridge at most 10 yards wide without firing a shot. But their presence was discovered at dawn and the enemy directed devastating fire of all types at the 77th Division soldiers. A shell killed platoon leader Lieutenant Joseph Lusk. The platoon desperately fought off attacks but continued to be depleted along Ishimi Ridge. The wounded were crazed for lack of medical care and water. The day had been unusually hot and sunny. Morphine, surrettes, and medical supplies soon ran out, as well as water. The wounded went untreated. No medic accompanied the platoon, and handkerchiefs substituted for bandages. There was hardly a man on the ridge who was not covered with blood, his own or his buddies. By the morning of May 18th, the platoon of 58 numbered only about 10 still able to fight. Still, artillery, mortars, machine gun bullets chopped away at their survivors. Not until midday could reinforcements from the rest of Company C come to the aid of the beleaguered remnants of the 1st Platoon. Those who came to relieve the embattled also were pounded by enemy fire. C Company Commander Lieutenant Ivan F. Campbell died from a bullet wound to the head, and 1st Sergeant Carl Stanick, who could have sat out the battle because of his wounds, was killed when a mortar exploded in his foxhole. By May 20th, the 77th held all of Ashimi, opening a path into Shuri. The price paid was extreme. A total of 204 soldiers had composed the original assault team. Only 48 escaped unscathed. On the 21st of May, General Ushijima called a night conference in the command caves under Shuri Castle. It was attended by all division and brigade commanders of the Japanese 32nd Army. By the end of the conference, it was decided to withdraw from Shuri Castle.